Hello everyone and welcome to episode 38 of the WMMA5 series here on the channel as it is Pride FC as we are having our first ever Brazilian Bushido show as uh, what a fucking card it is as I mean main event as big as the main event you could have in the heavyweight division right now Fate or a million and go taking on Big Nog as uh, there's a couple of uh, interesting undercard fights as uh, kind of some new debuts some Gracie's in there, Hoist Gracie, Forrest Griffin, that's wild. Uh, Enzo Grayson, Keith Jardine, and then Andre Semenov has a, a pride debut against Ronaldo Sabral, uh, Sakuraba, and Rodrigo uh, Hoos, and uh, Flavio Luis Mora, and Damian Maya finally making this pride debut. I feel like it's been a long ass time he's been waiting to have his pride debut, as we'll kind of talk about that more once obviously we get to the card, but the mail. We have a lot going on as we have signed a lot of people as we're going to start our lightweight division next year in 2005 and that will kind of be the end of us expanding our divisions. So just kind of run through the names. Rafael Dos Anjos, um, Nate Diaz, Katsuya Inoue who is, I believe we have him in rings right now, I could be wrong, no he is uh, in pride, he is 6-0, Dennis Silver as, uh, you know, one of the... Uh, one of the favorite lightweights of, of all time, in my opinion. Uh, for me, as uh, he's uh, just the kickboxing judo style was always really a lot of fun. As uh, I, I just thought he was the fucking man. Uh, Spencer Fisher, fucking another one of my favorite guys from the lightweight division, the King Fisher. As uh, he's a uh, you know a boxing jujitsu guy, seven and one right now. Diago, uh, Diago uh, Tavares as uh, Marlon. Matisse, uh, Matisse has as, uh, Joe Lozon, obviously, one, another one of my favorite lightweights, another Ultimate Fighter alumnus that, uh, I enjoyed his run in the Ultimate Fighter, one of my favorite, uh, runs in the Ultimate Fighter, as Eddie Alvarez, Clay Guida, one of my favorite fighters of all time as well, Clay Guida's the fucking man, BJ motherfucking Penn, the prodigy, as I think he's 8-0 right now, yes, as, I mean, he's the goddamn man, BJ Penn, Robbie Lawler, that's fun, as uh, he's six and three right now, it's a bit of a uh, interesting record. He's got a fight in M1 right now. He had a tough, you know, he right out of the gate he got signed by UFC in 2001 when he debuted, and he took on uh, some tough, tough competition. Nick Sarah, Chris Lytle, and then you know got released. Then he you know, went on, you know, his local killing run. Then took on uh, Dorian Price, Ross Pointon, as. Now he's got another fight at M1 before he officially becomes a part of uh, Pride FC. Hopefully he'll be 7-3 and three as uh, we extended our announcers. We extended Dan Hardy. Uh, we signed uh, Kazumi uh, Murakami. That's just a personal thing. He's in rings, I believe. Oh, what did, oh yes. Okay, yes, he is in rings. Uh, he's, uh, that was weird. I just threw me out for a bit. But yeah, he's in rings. Just, I just love Kazumi. Mirakami extended uh, Czech Congo, and Dario Matsui has left Takata Doja. We extended uh, Ice Cold Eagle, Fate of Elenco, Dennis Hallman, and Anderson Silva. And then we extended Volkan, and we signed Rico Rodriguez Suave. Rico Rodriguez, 15-3, and three, another uh, guy to add to the heavyweight division. He is a fucking killer in there. He's a wrestling jiu-jitsu style. He's beaten Frank Mir uh, in the past. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. The uh, Asirio Silva, that was, that was, uh, that's a big time win. Asirio Silva, I believe at the time, was undefeated. Let's see if we can see that. No, we can't. But uh, that was a, a big time fight for him. That really took on a lot of big names, but he's still a guy for the heavyweight division. You know, he's a, a, a name. You know, he's 16th fucking heavyweight in the world. So that's huge. But yeah, I mean, just a lot of signings. That lightweight weight division is going to be fucking awesome. I mean, Rafael Dos Anjos, Nate Diaz, Joe Lozon, Clay Guida, PJ Penn. Uh, some big fucking names. Plus, we're going to maybe drop down a guy from welterweight down to lightweight. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting. I think we can look at the, at the division right now as it stands. As it's just, uh, current weight class. Lightweight. As, yeah, yeah, just basically the same guys we just named. We haven't dropped anybody down. But, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, just, it's gonna be interesting, because we're gonna have our four divisions. We already have a lot of fighters. I think we're at, uh, it's either a, uh, I think we're at 125 fighters. I think there's an easy way to, uh, to look at that. I think we just can tour the company, I'll tell us. 
it, yeah, yeah, we got 125 fighters, four weight classes. Um, it's tough. It's very, it's very, very tough. Very, very tough. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we got going on for us right now in the uh, in the world of the Pride FC. Our stability is down because we had to push back the uh, Bride, the Brazilian Bushido one show. Because I just, I need to see Fedor Mianinko and Big Nog. I had to see it, so I pushed it back. Sure, we took down a lot of heat from our stability, but we'll get it right back. It's no big deal. Not a huge deal, uh, in my opinion. So, uh, we'll just run the show now. It's my God. Our first time in Brazil. Let's see if, it, if this doesn't pay out for us. Because I got a feeling it's not going to go well financially for us. If it's kind of a swing and a mess, we probably won't do a lot of these, but... I hope it does well. I, I love this idea of, a, of the Bushido shows. Because uh, the regular Pride, the original, obviously, in real time Pride, they would just do Bushido shows in Japan, obviously. But the, the rules were just kind of like how they are with when the, the uh, Grand Prix are going on. So, you know, the 10 minute and then the 5 minute, you know, second round. Uh, but eventually, whenever we get done with doing Grand Prix, which I'm not sure when exactly that's going to be. We're going to switch the way the, the rounds are. We're going to do the, uh, probably the either 10-5-5 five, five or just 5-5-5. Five, five, five. Uh, either way, I think we're going to do 10-5-5, five, five, but that's just me. The 20 minute rounds, uh, just, you know, the first 10 minute and then the 5-5, five, the five, cause just to make it a little bit more uh, interesting. Have that third round in there, just to change it up a bit. But uh, we have... For the main event, The Last Emperor, Fedor Mianenko, taking on Antonio Minotaur Rodrigo Noguera, as this is going to be the fifth defense of his Pride Heavyweight title, Big Nog, if successful, it would set a new record, obviously. As uh, Fedor has submitted four of his last five opponents, two of the best fan farm fighters in the world, Big Nog is first, Fedor is 23rd. Fifth time that uh, Big Nog is main event of a Pride show, this is the second time Fedor has. Big Nog has won three of his last five fights by decision, this is the first time they have fought. Look at stat picks. 7-0 to zero for Big Nog. I wouldn't count out the last emperor. Would not do it. I get it. He's in Brazil, but... Gotta, gotta go with... Uh, can't, can't count out Fedor. As Flavio Luis Mora taking on Damian Maia. They both submitted three of the last five opponents. Uh, they're both ranked in the middleweight division. 18th for Mora. Uh, 22nd for Damian Maia. This is the prime debut for Damian Maia. As... Uh, Mora and uh, Damian Mayan, that's 1-6, to six, as Rich is the lone backer of Flavio Luis Mora. As Flavio Luis Mora, talk about a guy who's just kind of carved his way into, throughout rings and kind of mecca as well, and into pride as he's, you know, he's taken off Rich, frankly, which he lost at, at MFC. But Jorge Pereira, he's beaten, he's beaten uh, Nick Diaz, he's lost to Amara Soliaf, which almost everybody has. As then he's also beaten Jose uh, Landy Jones as uh, won by hip hook. So I mean, you look at the the way he does it. As uh, you know, he got some he got a Darce choke, got a rear naked choke, got a lot of different a lot of different variables. But he, his last fight against Egan, I know he was rated poor. Let's we'll see if he can have another a better fight here against Damian Maya. As the Gracie Hunter, Zuchi Sakuraba taking on Rodrigo Hoos. As uh, this is a pride debut of Rodrigo Hoos. As they obviously he traded Who's Valley Tudo, which uh, Sakuraba has an overall record of 0 1 against other members of that team. First time they fought, Sakuraba's gonna enjoy the significant weight advantage. And the Baggy Lions have him as a big favorite as well. But Carl is backing Rodrigo Hoos as uh, 6 to 1 on the Blurgrass staff picks. So then the White Shark, Andre Semenov, taking on Ron Ronaldo Sobral. As uh, Sobral is the 8th ranked middleweight in Pride, uh, Semenov is 12th. This first time they have fought, uh, Sabra will enjoy a, sniff a significant weight advantage in this fight. He's going to have a 6th entry advantage, and this is also the Pride debut of Andre Semenov, which he has the lone backer of Sam S, as it's 6-1 to one on the Blair Cat staff pick. It's kind of crazy, you know, Andre Semenov has had quite the career as well in this world, as he started off very, very shit. He was 5-0 uh, and at the start of this series. And then he went 5-3, and three, lost his first three, which he lost to Andre Velosky, which that's tough. Then he went on a bit of a tear, taking on, uh, you know, uh, Valentin over Reem. And they lost to Matt Serra at rings. He lost to uh, Mark Solioff, which again, Mark Solioff, if, uh, if Chuck Liddell goes on the run, which I think he's going to, we're going to bring up Mark Solioff to take him on. 
is definitely the key. I mean, he's had quite the run. As uh, he's beaten Scott Smith, who's now in Pride. He's beaten Evan Tanner, who was out. Of, he did very shit in Pride, poor Evan Tanner. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, Andre Simonoff. He deserves to be here. He belongs here in Pride, and I think he's going to put on a, a hell of a show. It's going to be a tough fight to pull uh, against Ronaldo Sabral, that's for sure. He's in Enzo Gracie with the Dean of Mean Keith Jardine. Jardine has finished three of his last five opponents. Gracie's 17th in the middleweight division. Jardine is 24th. It's the first time they fought, and Jardine will enjoy a significant weight advantage as uh, Henzo has uh, got the Black Rats at picks 5-2. to two. As Keith Jardine, I think, you know, Keith Jardine's had a, quite the run. He's 9-1, and 4-0 no in pride. He's beaten Ryan Grace. He's beaten Little Nog, Trey Tellingman, uh, Messenger Suda. So not some biggish names. This is going to be the biggest name he's faced for sure. He's beaten Houston Alexander, a, a young Houston Alexander, but still, he, he beat him nonetheless. Uh, this is, you know, a big-time fight for him. And, uh... Poor, uh, you know, Henzo Gracie, who, he, his last one was against Forrest Griffin. He's lost to Vandalay, he's lost to Guy Metzger, and also Brawl, Merlio, and uh, Anderson Silva. But, uh, let's see if he can get a win here over uh, Keith Jardine. And then, the opener, Forrest Gracie versus Forrest Griffin. Uh, you know, Forrest has won three of his last five fights by decision. The first time they fought, Griffin will enjoy a significant weight advantage. The backgrounds have him as a large margin favorite. Forrest Gracie. I don't think he's won a fight. I uh, know. I think he did. He did just beat Minoru Suzuki. That he did beat Minoru Suzuki. But other than that, he's had it's a two, four, six fights before that where he lost them all, and we kept on booking him since uh, the he beat Nobuyuki Takata at the opening round. So out of that kind of. That whole time period, from when he debu when we debuted the mod, we started off, the, obviously that first ever show he won, uh, his first fight. And then ever since then, he has won lost six straight. Gave him an extra fight against Minoru Suzuki, probably shouldn't, but he's always crazy. I gotta have respect for him. Even though no fighter should be having lose, lost four, five, six straight and still be in Pride FC. But yeah, you know, much bigger talent. But he got his one over Minoru Suzuki, so now he's back. And he's going to take on Forrest Griffin, which Forrest Griffin's probably going to murder him. We'll see what happens, though. It's the prelims, as Fabrizio Verdum taking on Czech Congo. As, uh, I'm hoping Fabrizio Verdum gets the win there. I'm, I'm going to be honest, because, you know, I hope, you know, he's just, he's got a slow roll of things uh, so far, in my opinion, in, in his uh, career. It's 3 and 1. He lost to the big cat, Tom Erickson, but he's, you know, Tane and Pewter, Trey Tellingman, Alexander Tsuka. So this is a nice little stepping stone. Kind of someone on the same kind of. Wavelength of him. Check Congo 5 and 3. He's also beaten Daniel Pewter. He's lost to uh, Drum Lake Banner. And that was kind of his only two pride fights. But he started off, you know, tough. Uh, 0 and 2 in his career. Then he won 4 straight. Now he's 5 and 3. See if he can make it 6 and 3 or 5 and 4. As then uh, Crosley Gracie taking on Dan the Outlaw Hardy in a welterweight contest. The only welterweight contest on the card. So they are uh, ranked in the private uh, FC welterweight division. There's, uh, there's only probably like 23, 24 fucking welterweights in the whole division. So that makes sense. They're at the bottom of the totem pole. But Dan Hardy, he had a, quite the performance against uh, Paul Daly. And Crosley Gracie he hasn't won a fight at all. He's 0 and 2. He'll be probably 0 and 3 if Dan Hardy gets done with him. It's going to be a tough day for the Gracies on this card. Let me tell you, it's been a tough day for the for the Gracies this entire mod. I don't think they definitely lost more than they won in this in this mod, like for sure, all of them. Just combine all the Gracie records, it's definitely a losing record. So both guys who haven't won a fight yet, someone's gonna win. So here we go. The referee John McCarthy, our judges. Gracie's fighting them in front of the home crowd tonight and gets a big cheer as he makes his entrance. So here we go. Hardy hits a left jab and lands a big right hand. As Gracie looking very tentative, pokes out a quick jab that hits. Hardy can't connect with step strength and hits Gracie with a straight right. Jab is wide from Hardy and then catches Gracie with a crunching right hook. As he comes in looking to strike, Gracie looked like he was, able, he was going to step in and grapple, but Hardy suddenly took the initiative. As a jab hits home from Hardy and then he catches Gracie with a crunching right hook. A jab hits home from Hardy and then he lands a, two low, a low kick to the leg. Oh, that was two, but it was just one. As Hardy connects with a jab and the falling kick to the body misses. As uh, he gets next to the jab, oh, yeah, uh, right there. as he lands a left hand and hits Gracie with a straight right, the lands the jab and scores with a right cross. There's a left jab and another crunching right hook. As he fails to find home, this jab and he catches Gracie with a roundhouse kick to the body. So there's a nice jab and a straight right hand. He moves in close and ready to attack. He, Gracie hits a 10 jab. As he can't connect with the jab, and he scores that right roundhouse kick to the ribs. 
As he fails to find home, his jab, and he scores with the right cross. And he hits a left jab and hits Grayson with a straight right. As he can't connect with the step strikes, he lands a big right hand. Circling. Morally, uh, Gracie is looking at for his chance to get close enough to grapple. He can't hit the step left jab and lands a nice right head kick. And that is, uh, he's backing up now. He has been rocked. He is hurt. As he, there's a spinning back fist, but it, it lacked the power and he has to truly hurt him. As he tries to finish him off with a huge right hook, but Gracie avoids it. Circling back to the center, having gotten the time he needs to regain his wit somewhat. As uh, obviously Darren already confidently goes, comes in closer. As uh, it looked like we we're about to see Gracie try to get some type of grappling started, but Hardy was more aggressive. Took the initiative. As he fails to find home his jab and then catches uh, Gracie with a body kick. First time now. Uh, Dan Hardy is starting to breathe a little heavier. As circling wirely, uh, Gracie is looking for a chance to get close enough to grapple. As he jab lands from Hardy, missed the right, uh, the vicious right hand. This looks confident, shortening the range. He's looking to strike. As he lands a left hand and he hits a nice straight right that lands hard. There's a jab that hits home and he lands a big right hand. There's a jab and then a beautiful uppercut and he knocks him down with that uppercut. As he's moving in quickly, tries to finish him off with stomps and kicks. Stomps and kicks away at the stun Gracie but can't put him away. As Hardy tries to secure a ground position, he's unable to prevent uh, Dan Hardy from getting side control. His uh, cross at Gracie as uh, now he's pounding away, but Gracie isn't driven by the strike. He's trying to pull guard on Hardy, but he doesn't get anywhere with the attempt. Throws a few strikes with her without venom. Jason moves to guard, but Hardy doesn't allow it. He pounds away, but Gracie doesn't drop by the strikes. He blocks Gracie, tries to transition. As uh, he keeps him guessing with some few quick strikes. Tries to move to guard, but again, Hardy doesn't allow it. As he fires off some rights, but Gracie doesn't drop by them. He blocks Gracie, tries to transition to guard. And that's the end of the first round. Definitely shouldn't have went out of the first round. But uh, I guess fair fucks to Crosley Gracie. Staying alive out there. As obviously, that, that's all Dan Hardy. As now, the last round. Jab hits home from Hardy, then it's, he catches Gracie with a roundhouse kick to the body. As he connects with a nice jab and he scores with the right cross, it lands hard. Starting to have to push himself now, and this corner responded by urging him on a little louder. Rolls his shoulder, relax him, moves forward. As now there's a king connect with a jab, but he catches Gracie with a crunching right hook. There's a takedown attempt from Crosley, which uh, has a great sprawl by Dan Hardy, brings the takedown, then moves out of range. Jabs, hits home from Hardy, and then he lands a nice right head kick. And then looks unsteady on his feet. He tries to retreat and cover up. That last blow is rocked him. He winds up back up against the ropes with nowhere to go. As there's another right uppercut. What a shot. As he smashes Gracie with the right hand through the guard. As he's just trying to cover up. There we go. Big John McCarthy finally stepping in. Before uh, we would have saw a murder here in Brazil. But it uh, looked like a late call. That definitely was a late call. As uh, Crosley Gracie had no chance. That was all Dan, uh, Dan Hardy there. As he gets his first one. He's 1-1. One and one. Grazi Gracie, 0 and 3. Probably gonna get set down in rings. I'm not really sure. As, uh, it's just too it's too steep of a competition for him. As, uh, the last prelim fight, Fabrizio Verdulum taking on Czech Congo. As 3 and 1, 5 and 3, 6 4, 235, 6 4, 235, as well as uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu kickboxing. So, as a battle of the striker ground game, let's see who will win. It's gonna, you know. I'm sure Fabrizio's gonna get a takedown right out of the gate. Both no teams. Minus 230, plus 180. Czech Congo's got a fighter's chance. He's got a puncher's chance. As Herding's the ref. Judges at ringside. Uh, Verdum being in front of a home crowd gets a loud cheer as he enters. Underway. Comes forward on the attack. There's Verdum as he uh, manages the counter jab. As he can't connect with the step strikes and then catches Verdum with a low kick to the front leg. As a, a exchange of blows comes and goes without either fighter really landing anything significant. As they stand and trade in the center of the ring, but neither fighter can land a good shot. He comes forward with the attack. He throws a counter jab and it misses. He acts on the next jab and it hits a body kick. There's a takedown attempt from Verdum. He gets all of a leg, by, uh, but Congo remains standing, hopping on the other foot. As unable to complete the takedown, Verdum instead pushes Congo up against the ropes. He tries to use a knee from the clinch, but Congo is able to block it. Press up against the ropes. Congo still hits a few small punches to the ribs as he takes a knee strike just above the hip. As Verdum catches Congo with a knee strike to the ribs from the clinch while he's pressed up against the ropes. Looks to try to maintain control via his resting skills, but Congo works enough space that he can pull out, uh, pull clear and circle out. Jab is wide from Congo. He hits Verdum with a straight right. As he dances around his, uh, with his hands low, making a big show of how easy he is finding this. As Verdum just taunting Czech Congo as they come together and strike. As he dodges uh, a right hand and counterattacks with a quick left jab and a quick kick to the lead leg. As they stand and trade strikes, neither lands a significant blow in the exchange. As he moves forward, constantly trying to pressure Verdum and exchanging strikes, Congo steps into the pocket. As he lands a jab and then catches Verdum with a crunching right hook. As he simply, as uh, Verdum looked like he was going to shoot, but Congo simply took the initiative first. 
kind of connects a nice jab and hits a nice straight right hand as the exchange strikes. Does not produce any damage. Halfway point in the first round. Comes for walking down for Doom. He hits a jab in the exchange. As he can hit the set of left jab and catches for Doom with a right hook. As he's slowing down uh, just a little bit as he starts to get into the gas tank. Comes forward and the two fighters engage as uh, for Doom hits a jab in the exchange. A successful feat. He's for Doom vulnerable. As he lands a jab and catches for Doom with a crunching right hook. As he comes forward, look at the force uh, strike exchange. He hit, hits a counter left hand. As he lands a jab and catches for Doom with a right hook. As they come forward, Congo steps into the pocket. As he can't connect to the set of strikes, but he hits a scissoring kick to the legs. As uh, Verdum had looked like he was angling the grapple, but he couldn't take the initiative. As he can't connect with the set of strikes, then he lands a right hand. As uh, Verdum had looked like he was angling the grapple, but he couldn't take the initiative. As Congo connects to the jab, but Verdum evades the big right punch. As he lands a left hand that hits Verdum with a straight right. As Congo attacks the strikes, Verdum tries to hit his jab and it misses. He lands a left hand and then catches Verdum with a crunching right hook. As uh, Verdum shoots in now, looking for the takedown, he gets the single leg, he's pulling guard. It's one out of two on his takedown attempts as uh, Verdum just keeps him stuck on the ground. Minute left now, he's still just smothering him. Still smothering, that's the end of the first round. Looking at the fight metrics, Czech Congo, I think, won that f the first round. Uh, Verdum's gonna have to do a little bit more than that. I think if he even gets the takedown right out of the gate in the second round and kind of lays and prays and just sucks up time. I still don't think he'll he'll win the fight. He's gonna have to try to finish this fight to win it. It's just my opinion though. We'll see what happens. It's, uh, last round now. Congo fails to find the home on his jab. It's the nice, the nice straight right hand. He lands jab and then it's a high right head kick to the side of the head. Come forward and engage. Uh, Verdum misses the big right hand, putting him off balance. Alive Congo to attack with a quick left jab and a right hook. As he's slowing down now, his gas tank's being challenged. They come again and strike. As Congo slips past the right hook attempt and attacks with a quick left jab and a quick kick. Moves in closer, looking to open up an attack. As Verdum may have been setting up to shoot, but Congo aggressively took the initiative. A 1-2 from Congo fails to land. Congo moves in on Verdum, preparing to throw. As he connects with an extra jab and catches Verdum with a low kick to the front leg. He's looking very tired now. He's blown up at this point. Comedy moves in closer, looking to, to throw some strikes. As it looked like we're about to see a shot from Verdum, but Congo was more aggressive and took the initiative. As a jab hits home from Congo, then lands the right hand. And there's a large gash in the forehead of Verdum. Blood is starting to trickle down towards his eyes. As he can't connect with the step strikes, and hits Verdum with a straight right. As to now halfway point in the second round. They engage with strikes, but nothing significant happens. There's a shoot in on the takedown, but he can't. He gets hold of a leg, but Congo remains standing, hopping on the other foot. Drives him against the ropes. Got him brushed up against the ropes now. Yeah, just a minute. Very little happening. Short punches and some posturing. There's a trying to get him on the ground with a trip. He gets a quick inside leg trip. He can do nothing but pull guard. Smothers him. That's the end of the round. End of the fight. Check Congo. You name decision. There, as uh, with the, you know, starting off, yeah, Czech Congo, uh, he won the first round. That was a big, big momentum shift for him. Just when you win that first round, it's such, such a key moment, such a key round to win that if you're winning the fight going into that second round, all you got to do is just do a little bit of damage, just do anything that can create it to where it's even like a unanimous decision. Cutting the forehead. That was the best way to go about it. Gets the win. 6-3 and three for Czech Congo. 3-2 and two for Fabricio Verdum. As he loses in Brazil. As Czech Congo thanks his bunch to all his fans. Showing respect, Chongo, Czech Congo praises Verdum for his skill and toughness. So now our first main fight. It's Horace Gracie against Horace Griffin. As I gotta take a swig for the working man. Oh my. As uh, Horace Gracie. Taking on Forrest Griffin. 6'185", 6'3", 205. The bigger... Stronger, the better for his Griffin. Uh, this is just gonna be a tough night for Horace Gracie as Gracie shoots obviously mixed martial arts. Roof support minus 660 for Forrest Griffin, and then Hoist being at a plus 520. Mario Yamasaki's our referee, our judges. Uh, you know, 35 pound weight advantage. Gracie gets a good direction of the fancy energy. He's fighting in front of the home crowd tonight. Here we go. Takedown attempt for Forrest Griffin. He gets the takedown. He's now got side control. Looking for the Kimura. As Gracie stops uh, Griffin from applying it, he was blocks the attempted sweep. Throws a few strikes with the out venom. Tries to sweep from the bottom of the side control, but doesn't budge Griffin. Inside control, Griffin does a couple of punches signed to keep him guessing. As Gracie tries to transition the car, but he can't manage it. As, uh, fires off a few punches as he catches his breath. He tries to sweep, but only succeeds in shifting Griffin slightly, ending up under north-south position. Takes a short knee strike to the head as he tries to scramble out from underneath Griffin, but is held firmly in place. Takes a short knee strike to the side of the head. Blocks Gracie, tries to scramble. 
As he decides to alter position, moves himself on the side control, looks to get mount. He tries to get mount, but Gracie was ready and immediately starts to scramble. Scramble results in Gracie being on the back foot half guard. As he attempts to pass half guard and gain better position, as he tries to counter the pass attempt, and then they find himself scrambling for position. As now, again, Griffin on top, Gracie pulling half guard. Begins trying to get his leg free of half guard in a better position. He passes it, and again, Gracie was ready. Immediately starts to scramble. Griffin again. Now he ends up in guard. He's trying to pass the guard. He's trying to pass the side control, but doesn't have time to secure the position. And again, Gracie starts to scramble. As uh, now, Gracie's turtled up with Griffin on his back. As he fires away with right hands, but Gracie doesn't do much damage. As he pounds away, but there's unable to land many clean shots. As uh, But Gracie again, covering up well. As the scrambles back to his feet, but Griffin has back control. Still looking for a German suplex. He gets it. A wicked German suplex lands him. And again, he's got him on top of his turtle up opponent, holding him around by his waist. He pounds away, but Gracie doesn't drop out of his legs. As he, Griffin is too slow to stop Gracie getting back up, but he does get uh, back control. And now he's got another German suplex attempt. And again, a beautiful German suplex. Just throws him on the fucking mat. Got, you know, he's got a hold of him. Takes it back. He's got both hooks in. Looking for the rear naked choke. He gets the rear naked. Oh, but it's saved by the bell. Just like that. That was fun. What an exciting round that was. As obviously Forrest Griffin winning that round. As uh, there's the bell. The final round begins as uh, Gracie wants to grapple. But is clearly aware of his opponent's striking. Can't connect with the step strikes. He scores the right cross. As he lands a left hand. And he lands a low kick to the legs. He steps in and grapples with his opponent. Looking for uh, to trip him up. Put him on the ground. He, the trip doesn't work. Griffin blocked it. Takes control of the back. As uh, Griffin hits a big knee strike to the body. He's looking at muscle Gracie backwards. up against the ropes. He does so. Looking to force a more tight clinch. He's got it now. There's a knee strike. He misses the knee strike, but he main con maintains control. He loses the more tight clinch after a knee strike misses again. Gives uh, Gracie this time the opportunity to wrestle free. Starting to slow down a touch of force Griffin, perhaps uh, conserving a little energy. They want to get in close. They get into a clinch. Looks like he's gotten the better of the clinch. Using his wrestling skills, Griffin is trying to push Gracie up against the ropes. He manages it and controls Gracie up against the ropes. Trying to lock Gracie into a more tight clinch. He does so. Uh, he's... Uh, fucking hoist Gracie couldn't fight out of it. Minute left now. As he drives the knee into the stomach. As he partially blocks the knee. Enough to allow him to wrestle free of the clinch. Can't connect with the steps. Because he scores the right cross. And that's the end of the fight. Uh, you know decision. For Forrest Griffin. 8-1 now. Hoist Gracie. 13-7-1. I think it's time to send him fucking down the ring. I think it's time. Uh, you know it's a decent fight though. So at least he's got that going for him. That's 13-7-1. Voice Grace. I mean, he's 37 years old. He's just, it's its tough out here. He's got to take on guys his own fucking age. <laughs> As uh, giving thanks, Forrest Griffin raises his team at Roof Sport. is very responsive and the fans came out to support him. Names a local club and says he's heading there for a post victory party and thinks and that everyone is welcome. Wow. As a solid performance from a marketable fighter in Forrest Griffin. As Henzo Gracie taking on the Dean of Mean Keith Jardine. As let's see if Gracie's going to win tonight. He's got the best shot at it when he's got the uh, betting odds. Or in his favorite, minus 110. 10-5-1 10, and one with uh, one no contest. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. So he, another bigger, stronger fucking fighter. It's going to be tough. Mario Masaki's our referee. The 25-pound weight advantage. Roar from the crowd as uh, Henzo enters as he's from around. Here is obviously from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. As the fight begins, as he lands a left hand and hits Gracie with the beauty of a straight right, he lands... As two left hands land from Jardine, but Gracie evades the big punch. Comes in close and ready to attack. As Gracie appeared to be going to try and get in close, but Jardine took the initiative as he jabbed its home from Gra uh, from Jardine and hits Gracie with a leg kick. As Gracie had looked like he was angling the grapple, but he couldn't take the initiative as he can't connect with the jab. Catches Gracie with a low kick to the front leg. Two left hands land from Jardine, but doesn't hit the leg kick that follows up. As he connects with the jab, but Gracie avoids the kick to the body, and that's the setup. He misses all the strikes in the combo that ended with a spin kick attempt. As uh, Gracie was ready and managed to catch the kick. As Jardine hops on one foot trying to bounce. Gracie tries for the takedown attempt. It's unsuccessful. As Jardine pulled his leg free and stepped back safely. As a jab lands and it lands the big right hand. Can't connect with the setup left hand. Or the left jab. But he hits Gracie with a straight right. As he hits a left jab he scores a leg kick. And he moves to southpaw now. As he completely comes in closer. Looking to throw some strikes. It looked like we were about to see Gracie try to get some grappling started, but Jardine was well Gracie took the initiative. He lands a jab, he lands the big left hand. He's slowing down just a little as he starts to get in the gas tank, and now as he isn't troubled by the the, uh, the combination ending with a low kick to the legs, 
halfway point now. As he connects with the knife trap, hits the crazy with the beauty of a straight left. He takes a moment to switch to the traditional stance. There's another setup left jab that doesn't happen. He connects with a crunching straight right to the jaw. And he knocked him down with that one. He hits the mat. He was rocked with that one. He moves in quickly, kneeling down beside him, hammering down with punches. As he just starts out loading with massive rights. And Gracie is, is getting plastered now. As uh, Mario Yamasaki pulls Jardine away. Stopping the fight. You're winning by TKO. The Dean of Mean. Keep Jardine now 10-1. and one. As uh, Henzo Gracie. 10-6, 1-1. <laughs> tough as well. As uh, poor Henzo. You know, again, he's had a tough go of it. Now it's lost two straight. But it was a good fight, though. <laughs> it's made it good. Dean of Mean. Keith Jardine, 10 and 1. Hell of an impressive record. That's a big time win for him. As he name checks all of his sponsors, you know, uh, thanks to all of his fans who turn out to support him. Keith Jardine says that it was a tough fight and gives a show of respect to him. So great seat there. As Andre Semenov battling Ronaldo Sobral. As, uh, I, it's kind of funny. I'm trying, I think every uh, guy from Brazil has lost tonight. We'll see, though. Maybe we could get a little change here as the white shark, Andre Semenov, battling Ronaldo Sobral as 5'11", 205, 6'1", 205, 15-5, 15-5, the Sambo style, the Luta Livre wrestling style, plus 150, minus 200. This is going to be a hell of a fight as uh, I'm excited for her beans, the ref, our judges, all of the way in about the same. It's noticeable that Sobral looks a lot heavier than his opponent now. Sobral gets a good reaction from, uh, from the fans as he enters the air, uh, arena. He's fighting in front of his own crowd tonight. Opening bell. As he can't connect with a jab, but the big right hand follows up misses as he attacks his strikes. Throws a counter left hand, but it doesn't connect. As he connects with a nice jab and then hits Sobral with a straight right. As he looked over, he's angling for a takedown attempt, but he couldn't take the initiative. He throws a punch, but Sobral was equal to it. They stand in trade blows, but neither can land anything damaging. Come forward on the attack. Sobral throws off a counter jab, but it doesn't connect. As he throws two quick punches, but doesn't hit either of them. Sobral can be heard trash, ducking as the two fighters circle. As uh, Semenov moves and goes, ready to attack. It's 10 of his left jab. As he cannot connect with the jab, but he hits a nice straight right hand to Semenov. And there's another can at the set of jab. It's the straight right. He comes forward with a forcing a strike exchange. Semenov manages a counter jab. He can't connect with the step strikes, but then it's uh, Semenov with a straight right to Sobral. They come together as uh, Sobral hits a left jab. But has the right hand and on the on the gloves. As again, uh, he ha lands the left jab, but he finds his right cross blocked. Sobral attacks the strikes. He scores with two kind of jabs to Simonoff. Jab lands from Sobral. Uh, Simonoff evades the big right as exchange of blows comes and goes without really, uh, without neither fighter really landing anything significant. As uh, fighters go toe to toe with strikes, but neither can land anything significant. And again, <laughs> can't land anything significant. Can't land anything significant. Halfway point now. Nothing happened in the ring. What a snooze fest this has turned into. He can't connect with the set of strikes. He catches Sabral with the right hook. As he, Sabral shoots in for the takedown. He gets the takedown. Semenov's on his back pulling guard. As he's looking for a guillotine now. Uh, Semenov, what a great job there. Off his back. Trying to grab a guillotine. But uh, Sabral pulls free. Semenov didn't have it fully sunk in yet. As he throws a few strikes. But clear, clearly sort of things as he can think. Uh, Sabral keeps Semenov guessing with a few quick strikes. He throws out some punches to Semenov on the bottom. But Sabral leans back to avoid him. They all know some right hands, but uh, Semenov deals with them comfortably. As uh, he applies double underhooks, keeping Sabral from launching any attacks. That's a great job by Semenov from the bottom, doing just a smart tactic there with the double underhooks. As he throws a few strikes there without venom, trying to pass the guard. He passes the half guard. As Sabral pounds away his right, so feels like anything. So trying to get the full guard on Sabral, but doesn't get any worth it to Semenov, and that's the end of the first round. Well, back and forth contest. I think with Sabral with the takedown and, and what he did on top in control, I think he won the round with that one. Uh, but it, it's still close. It's still very, very close. Semenov can have a dominant second round and maybe steal the fight. We'll see. As uh, Sabral shoots in for the takedown right out of the gate. Smart move. He gets it. It's going to be tough for Semenov. He pulls guard. G again, look at that guillotine from the bottom. As again, he doesn't get a fully sunk in. It's a great job by Semenov, though. That's going to catch somebody with that. And uh, that's a dangerous, dangerous thing. As it, Sabral begins trying to pass the guard. He's ready for the attempt, though. And Sabral keeps uh, uh, firmly in guard. As he leans back to avoid a couple of wide swings from Semenov. He throws a few weak-looking bunches besides his next move. He's trying to sweep Sabral, but he can't do it. As uh, Sabral fires off some runs, Semenov has a shot of them. He blocks Semenov. He tries to sweep him in guard. He tries to pass the guard. He can't get past it. Semenov stops him in half guard. 
He tries to start working to get out of half court in a better position. He, he tries to counter the pass attempt. They find himself scrambling for position. As uh, Sabral is left to turn up with Sabral, uh, with Simonov, rather, behind him. As, uh, and, oh my god, Simonov pounds away, and Sabral is having serious difficulty surviving them. As a minute left, he takes advantage of the pause. Sabral scrambles back up, and Simonov gets back in control. As uh, Simonov holding Sabral from behind, looking to try and drag him down the floor, he gets the takedown. He tried to fend it off, but it was a, it was a battle he wasn't going to win. As he looks to loses his scramble, and Sabral is quick to try to uh, trick, quick to try and scramble free. Jesus, he ends up in, in guard as Sabral. Sabral pounds away, but Simonov calmly deals with the wow. I don't know how the fuck he got out of that. It looked like he was in a terrible predicament, and then it was like there was a pause, and he just got out of it. But uh, Simonov could have won that fight. Had he kept control, I don't think it's going to be enough. We'll see, though. We'll see what the judges think. Wow, they, yeah, they gave him to Andre Simonov. That was a hell of a fight. I would love to see us again in the future. Andre Simonov gets his pride debut win. Upset win. But, uh, man, uh, again, poor guys from Brazil. No one's won yet. We'll, uh, we'll see if the streak finally comes to an end. As, uh, man, that was tough. That was a hell of a fight, though. And it was. It turned into a bit of a snooze fest there in the first one. There was a good solid minute of them not landing anything. But he gives a name trick to everyone on that team. And Miss Dean has all of his video sponsors and his, all of his friends' family support. It's a little bit just pride debut victory. So they are already looking forward to the next fight. As the next matchup on the card is, is Sakuraba. The Gracie Hunter. Good to see Sakuraba taking on Rodrigo Huth. That's pride debut. As 12 and 4. 12, 6, and 1 in one no contest. As 36 years old. Is the Gracie on a Kazushi Sakuraba. Uh, six foot, both six foot, but, you know, Sakuraba's got a, at least 20 pounds on him. Takata Dojo, who's Valley Tudo, minus 450, plus 350. Big John McCarthy's our referee. Our judges, who's being in front of him, crowd gets a loud cheer as he enters. The opening bell comes forward, looking for the take down. He gets past the, he can't get past the sprawl of Sakuraba, gets pushed down under his hands and knees. Looking for a Darsh choke, it's unsuccessful, and Hoos is able to, Pull free and scramble. Manages to come out on top of side control. Does a few left hands. Takes a moment to plan ahead. Again, fires a few punches there. Aren't felt, but they're not thrown with any great force. He throws a few weak looking punches. He decides on his next move. Fires off a handful of punches. Each easily being blocked with gloves. He throws some small strikes. But he's clearly just taking a moment to try and get his breath. He's looking for a Kimura. Again, who blocks it. Wow, the referee decides there's a lack of progress being made. Staying the back up. As the soccer robber uses the left jab while backing away. A jab is wide from Hoos. He lands the right hand. As Sakuraba looked like he was about to shoot, but Hoos stepped in fast and started to clinch. Hoos gets out wrestles in the grapple, and Sakuraba takes control. Sakuraba is trying to muscle Hoos up against the ropes. He doesn't let himself be driven back, though, and gains dominant position in the grapple. Sakuraba wrestles himself into dominant position, trying to push Hoos so that his back is against the ropes. He can't move Hoos at all, though, and finds himself being out wrestled. Using his wrestling skills, Hoos is trying to push Sakuraba back up against the ropes. He can't move Sakuraba at all, though, and finds himself being out wrestled. As he's using his wrestling skills, Sakuraba is trying to push. Hoos up against the ropes. He can't do it, though, and Hoos gets a more dominant position in the grapple. Trying to muscle Sakuraba against the ropes as uh, Sakuraba doesn't let himself be driven back. Trying to push him. Uh, Hoos so that his uh, back is up against the ropes. Hoos finds himself being out wrestled. He can't keep control, and Sakuraba wrestles, wrestles his way into a dominant position. He's got underhooks now, looking for the takedown. He can't get it, though. Hoos stops it, and he's using his wrestling to take control of the grapple. Jazz wrestles Sakuraba backwards up against the ropes. He doesn't do it, though, as Sakuraba defends it well. Again, he's got the underhooks, looking for a takedown. He gets it. He gets the trip takedown. Hoos is left on his back under side control. He punches down with Hoos there. Easily taking on gloves. Throws a few strikes, but it's clear he's throwing things out and catches breath. Sakuraba again, plunging down, easily being taken on the gloves. Again, being blocked uh, with gloves. Throws a few left hands with the body now. Tries to find on Hoos, but all the blows are going to be dealt with. Again, all the blows are going to be dealt with. And, uh, again, calmly dealing with the blows. And that's the end of the first round. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen. Granted, it's been uh, pretty much all Sakuraba. But for a fight that's plus 440, plus 350 on the betting odds. Rodrigo Hoos is doing a great job. He's, when it's time to, you know, to wrestle with him and to get control of the grapple. He's doing his part. And it's just at that moment when he got the, finally got the takedown in Sakuraba. is all Sakuraba. So if he can get... Some type of dominant position and kind of start landing in. He could win the fight. Highly doubt that's going to happen. No, stepping in. Who's aggressively gets the dominant position to clinch. Trying to muscle up against the ropes. He does so. He pins him. 
Now he's looking to get the takedown. He's trying to grab both legs, but he couldn't get the takedown. Zuckerhoff instead wrestles his way into controlling the grapple. He stomps down on his opponent's foot. He's got both on the hooks in. Now he's got the trip. It's all over. <laughs> As he's beginning to try to get his leg free of half guard. So he tries to counter the pass attempt, and they find himself scrambling for position. Sakurai was up first, quickly grabs who's pushing him against the ropes. Again, got the underhooks, looking for the takedown. He gets the trip. He's not going to get in the side control. He passes, but that's enough time to secure position for who starts scrambling. And the scramble ends up with Sakurai grabbing who's and grabbing, getting a waist lock, getting back control. As uh, now he's trying to push who's face first up against the ropes, but uh, who's struggles to allow it. As showing good, can, good tendency, who's breaks free of the back and Joan gets back in the center. Sakurai was slowing down just a little bit, a little bit as he starts to get into the gas tank. And now Hoos, again, starting to slow down a touch, perhaps considering a low energy. As he moves in closer, looking to open up an attack. Feared are going for the takedown, but Hoos took the initiative first. As Hoos hits a left jab and hits Sakurai with a beautiful right uppercut, and he knocked him down with it. What a great uppercut by Rodrigo Hoos as he moves in. Quickly kneeling down beside Sakurai, but started hammering down with punches, and he is getting blasted. And the big drummer got he pulls Hoos off of him and stopping the fight. Fucking your winner, finally! Someone from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Rodrigo Hoos, winning in his debut. What a fucking... That was awesome. I thought it was over for sure, but Rodrigo, who's one uppercut, changed the whole fucking fight. Great job there. Gets the win over Sakuraba. Poor Sakuraba. As, uh, let's see, I think he's lost now. Three in a row now. I mean, you know, Chuck Liddell, Rick Franklin, you know, he's had some tough, tough goes as of, it, as of late. But hopefully, I want to have him take on Anderson Silva. That's a fight I want to set up. Hopefully, we can end up happen, though. If we have to send poor Sakuraba down to, to rings, I would hate to do that. As giving thanks to Rodrigo Hoos, praise his team at Hoos, Valley Dudo, as the various sponsors and the fans who came out to support him. As uh, Rodrigo Hoos says that he is very happy to cap his pride debut with a win. Big win, too, as the co-main event. I know it's kind of a weird co-main event, but both guys are from Brazil. Uh, you have, I think, the this was good enough to be the main event as far as the popularity goes. They're both pretty even, 15-3, 7-0, no. Damian Maia, Flavio... Release Mora. It's minus 130, minus 140. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a hell of a fight, I think. We'll see what happens, though. Big John McCarthy is a referee. The judges for this contest. Both fighters get a good reaction as uh, during their entrances. They're both fighting in front of a hometown crowd. But underway. Two fighters get up close to wrestling for position. It's my, uh, aggressively gets the dominant position. He tries to wrestle more backwards up against the ropes. Isn't going anywhere, though. Looks to take Mora down by uh, setting up a judo throw. Doesn't get it though. Mora blocked it. Uh, any attempt to move him. As um, I, again, trying to do a judo-based throw. And again, he gets stopped. As then he, he uses his wrestling to take control of the grapple. Does Flavio. As uh, he in control of the grapple. Of uh, the clinch, rather. As Mora tries to complete the takedown. He gets it. As he gets side control, too. Fires off a few punches. They are throwing with any great force. He's trying to pull guard on Mora, but doesn't get any with the attempt. He throws a few right hands, but it's mainly just trying to catch his breath. Takes a moment to plane ahead now. Inside control, catching his breath still, just to content to throw a couple of punches. Looking for a knee bar. Defends himself well, though. Doesn't give up the leg. Uh, does Damian Maya. As, uh, man. You have, uh, Flavio. As he's trying to move to guard, but, uh, Flavio doesn't allow it. Inside control, Mora catches his breath. Could then just throw a couple of punches to the body. Tries to transition the car, but he can't manage it. As a lengthy stalemate of, uh, period results in the referee standing back up. Halfway now in the first round, the two fighters get up close to a wrestling position. Damian Maya is the aggressor in the clinch. He's trying to muscle Mora up against the ropes. He does so, and now he's down the bend of the ropes. Looking for a judo throw. He gets that judo oh, throw as he gets taken up by a quick inside leg trip. He's nothing but pull guard. He attempts to pass guard. He passed the half guard. He's trying to get better position. Out of half guard into better position. He does so. He's got side control now. He's fired off a few punches there. are thrown without any great force, though. But uh, Mora tries to transition to, to a guard, but can't manage it. As he attempts to get mount, he's got mount. Damian Maya is in mount with 225 left. Fires off some laps, but Mora is in trouble with the strikes. He, he tries to sweep on the bottom, but it doesn't budge Maya. Fires away with punches, but Mora has, uh, it doesn't take any undue damage. Again, trying to sweep mount. Can't do it. He pounds away, but Mora calmly deals with him. Now he's got his back as uh, looking for the rear naked choke. He fights off the rear naked choke attempt, and that is the end of the round. Man, Damian Maya. I think I'd have to give that one to Damian Maya. I know that's kind of it's tough. But I think when he was in control on the ground, he's doing all the passes. Felt like he was doing a lot more than what Flavio did, but that's just my opinion. We'll see what happens in the second round. Last round, round two begins as uh, my aggressively moves in, grapples with Mora, trying to muscle him up against the ribs. He does so. Now he's pinned him. Looking for the judo throw. He doesn't get it, though. 
again, pushes him back up the, the ropes, does so, looking for it again, can't get it again, third time's a charm, it is, it's a superb outside leg, leg trip now, as uh, Maya throws a few left hands, but it's mainly just trying to catch his breath, he tries to move the guard, but Maya doesn't allow it, he looks to get himself a mount, uh, Mora rolls to the side to try to escape the mount, but only succeeds in, uh, succeeds in giving up his back, as he prevents Maya from applying a body triangle, blocks the attempt to roll him off his back, uh, Maya tries to get both hooks in, but again, Mora blocks it, as Maya blocks the rollover, a minute left now, looking for the rear naked choke, Mora fights it off, blocks the attempt, another rear naked choke, blocks it again, and that's the end of the round, end of the fight, Damian Maya in the end decision, gonna be 8-0 now, now an average fight, 15-4 for Flavio Luis Mora, but uh, man, Damian Maya's gonna be a fucking problem, as uh, Damian Maya thinks everyone connected to shoot the box for having her in this fight, then sponsor supporting financially. Damian Maya says it was a tough fight and gives a show of respect to Flavio Luis Mora as the main event. That last time for Fedor Emelianenko, nine and oh, taking on Big Nog and Tony Minotauro Rodrigo Nogueira in the Pride Heavyweight Division, sixteen and two, nine and oh, six foot two thirty. So we got a bigger, a uh, little taller, you know, five pounds heavier. Big Nog, both twenty eight years old, Sambo style, of course, from the last Ember in the Jiu Jitsu boxing style of Big Nog. Uh, as uh, the Hoos Valley Tudo Red Devil Sport, plus 300, minus 400. I wouldn't count out Fedor Emelianenko, though. This motherfucker is a, a killer. He's a savage. Look at the names he has beaten. Ice Cold Igor, Andrei Vlasky, Gary Kudrich. Sure, it's not impressive when you kind of get past Andrei Vlasky in Ice Cold Igor, because you look at Big Knock. Who's he taking on? He's taking on Ice Cold Igor. He's taking on Pete Williams. And he's beaten Igor twice. He's beaten Gavin Randall and Mark Kerr. He's beaten Josh Burnett, but he's also lost to Josh Burnett. Uh, he's lost to Randy Couture, weirdly enough, back in Bride, or back in Rings, rather, in July of 2000. But, uh, you know, they've both beaten Gilbert Yavel and Siyoshi Kaku uh, Kashika, rather, as, uh, about said Siyoshi Kakuchi. That is not who was in uh, uh, fucking middle, uh, mixed martial artist. Not at all. Fucking All Japan Junior, <laughs> Yoshi Kikuchi, as uh, 16 and 2, 9 and 0. Let's see if Fedor can do it. As uh, the, as this for the Pride of the title, of course, Herb Dean's our referee, our judges. Nogueira gets a good reaction from the fans. He enters uh, the arena. He's fighting in front of his own crowd. And I here we go. They start with a touch of gloves. As Nogueira fails to find home as jab, he hits a nice straight right hand. As setting it up well, Fedor shoots him for the takedown. He gets the takedown. Nogueira pulls guard. As, man, he's got the guillotine off the fucking takedown, but Fedor pulls free. Nogueira doesn't have it, didn't have it fully applied, as he throws a few weak-looking budgets to sides on this next move. As, uh, he tries to pound on Nogueira, but none of the blows are anything degree of power. As he gets double hook in, double underhooks in, and pulls Fedor close, controlling him well. He pounds away, but Nogueira calmly deals with him. As, again, he's got double underhooks in, controlling him well from the bottom. Throws a few weak, relatively weak-looking right hands. He pounds away with rights, but fails to land anything significant. Again, He's smothering him, uh, is Nogueira from the bottom, just keeping him close and stopping him from posturing up. That's actually a really great strategy. He fires off a handful of punches, each easily being blocked with gloves. Throws a few weak-looking punches, decides on his next move. As uh, we get a break from the action, referee stands him back up, he comes forward with the attack. As uh, now Nogueira's in the pocket, he lands a left hand, but uh, Fedor evades the big right. They meet in the center, start to strike. Nogueira finds his right cross blocked. Fedor throws a Two quick punches, but Nogueira has great movement and avoids both of them. Nogueira looks confident, shortening the range. He looks to strike. He lands a jab and hits a nice straight right hand. They engage. Fedor falls for a clever feint as he dodges a right hand and the counter attacks a left cross. As Nogueira can't connect with the sub strikes, lands a low kick to the legs. As he lands two right, uh, lands two left hands, but Fedor again evades the big right. They meet in the center. Nogueira misses the right hook and gets countered, uh, countered with a jab and a right cross. They meet in the center. There's a brief exchange of fire, but neither lands anything. Fedor shows good head movement, bobbing and weaving his way past two punches. Uh, Nogueira bobs and weaves, making two punches a miss. This has just been a hell of a contest, early on even. Both fighters moving and engage. As Nogueira hits a jab and fails on the hook attempt of the body, Fedor hits a left cross. He's can't connect the, the jab and it hits Fedor with a straight right. As Nogueira throws a white hook to the body, but Fedor avoided it. The jab is wide from Nogueira, but then catches Fedor with a right hook to the body. They come forward and engage. There's a left hook as Fedor scores the jab and misses the low kick. Minute left now. They engage uh, with strikes with nothing significant happens. They stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with strikes with, with a flurry. Ends without any really damaging shots there. That's the end of the round. Man, it's tough because you look at the fight metrics. It seemed like it's all, you know, Fedor. He's got the strike advantage. He had the takedown. 
But Nogueira was doing his thing when they were standing there at the end of the round. Uh, it's tough. It's a tough one to call. I'm going to say slight edge to Fedor. Slight, though. It's a fucking slight edge. It's going to come down to the second round. This is gonna. Someone might get fucked out of a title here. As this is going to be nuts. As some fans are booing after that round. I thought it was fucking awesome. I don't know. This Just from the text, it seemed like it was a, a, quite the contest of two men that were uh, just on the same page. As our, our last round, round two begins. A jab at someone from Nogueira. Then he catches Fedor with a low kick to the front leg. Fedor may have been aiming to get in close, but Nogueira aggressively took the initiative. As Nogueira hits the left hand and the body kick follows up, as Telegraph allows Fedor to grab it, takes that chance, looking for the takedown, he gets that takedown. Now he's on his back and he pulls guard. Looking for that guillotine, but again, Fedor gets free of that guillotine. Man, that guillotine out of the bottom of the takedown, such a smart idea. But they just, no one's been able to finish it. As uh, Fedor fires, fires off some rights, but Nogueira doesn't try by them. Looking for an arm bar from the bottom, but Fedor feeds, fends off the arm. It doesn't give it up as he pounds away with rights. Doesn't do much damage. Tries to sweep from the bottom, but Fedor doesn't budge. Does a few strikes, but is clearly slowing things down so he can think. He fires off some punches. He blocks attempted sweep. Now he's just throwing a couple of punches of the body on top as he. Nogueira gets the double underhooks in. Pulls Fedor in close, controlling him well. He pounds away with rights, but fails to land anything significant. That's the end of the round, just like that. Man, again, looks like Fedor has won that. I mean, three strikes to 26 plus that takedown when he caught his leg. That's tough. Stuff. I think Fedor won. I think we have a new Pride Everweight Champion. Oh, we do not. No, Big Nog gets the win by unanimous decision. That makes his fifth defense. Yeah, wow. That's interesting. That is, uh, as I can see why, you know, he had the underhooks when he was on the bottom. He was at least trying to finish the fight. You could say Fedor didn't really try it every time off the takedown. He tried it for that, those submissions for that rear naked choke. But you looking at the fight metrics, two for two on takedowns. 64 to 15 on strikes. It's tough. He didn't couldn't get any sweeps. Fedor did a great job. I think Fedor got screwed. I don't know. That's just me. I would love to see a rematch in the States. Or not in the States. I would love to see this rematch in Japan. As he gives a name check to everyone at Who's Valley Tudo. All his various sponsors and friends. Then all of his friends, family, and supporters. With a pride of title around his waist. He celebrates continuing his reign as champion. I don't know though if he should be proud of that. Well, like, yeah, Fedor probably got robbed in Brazil. It's kind of my opinion on it. I don't know, though. It's tough. It's tough, tough. So we increased pop everywhere. I think we made some money off of it. Fight of the night went to Andre Simonoff and Ronaldo Sobral. That makes sense. KO was that Rodrigo who's, uh Kazushi Sakuraba, the fucking uppercut. That makes sense. It's, uh... Yeah, yeah we made $2 million. How fun. Yeah, I, yes. Big Nog. God bless him. You know... He did, he was doing things to where he didn't seem like he was not in control, you know, like even on the bottom with the, the double underhooks and whatnot, but I just, I know, oh boy, Henzo got fucking hospitalized. That's tough. Yeah, he did get fucked up, but I didn't think it was that bad. Wow. As a uh, man. Man, oh man. As, oh yeah, we signed Juan Waterman. He's going to be in uh, rings, though. As Renal Sabral definitely will not be signed by KSW. Yeah, and uh, Hoy's Gracie's contract's coming up. I think we're going to let him go. I think that's that's it for the legend. Like an Hoy's Gracie going to be walking away in the sunset. I get it. Listen, sure, his name value is mid-level international, but he is 13-7-1. He's 2-7 in pride. He's 37 years old. I think it's time to let him go. Uh, let somebody else take, take control of him as... Uh, Oh, yeah, Ralph Gracie. Yeah, why not? Let's bring another Gracie in. <laughs> Fucking Ralph Gracie. Eight and five. The only one with a positive record. Uh, well, I mean, always he's got a positive record, but, you know, I think, like, as far as the, the mod has started, let's take a look. Uh, let's see, 2000. So he's five and one. So it's, uh, actually, no, he does not have a positive record since the mod started. Since the mod started, he is 3-5. in five. Yeah, it's tough. Maybe we shouldn't sign him. I don't know, though. We need more people for the lightweight division. It's another Gracie. It's kind of fun. We could see him lose to a lot of people. Uh, where is uh, fucking Ronald Brawl? Just want to make sure his contract's up. As that will do it for this episode of Pride FC. As I want to make sure we get him. As man, my god, I mean, I feel like Fedor still got robbed. Let me know in the comments. Do you feel like Fedor got robbed? Do you feel like Big Nog did his thing uh, and making sure he won? 
I'm not sure. You know, I still I would I want to see this happen again. Uh, maybe at Fist of Fear, uh, Fist of Fire. You know, maybe even at Total Elimination because we have to have something on the main card for that. Because obviously we're gonna have the lightweights in their tournament, but you know, we want to make sure that's not the main event. Uh, it's not gonna be on the American Bushido card, but that's gonna be a hell of a fight. Man, those stuff like Dan Anderson, how fun. As uh, yeah, it's just you know, we we gotta have something either at Fist of Fire or uh, Total Elimination. It's gonna be in the main event. I'm not sure if we're gonna do a Brazilian Bushido too though. We gotta have something. I do like Murillo and Alex Stebling as the main event as of right now, but that's a decent one now. But it, it could be better. But that's just because you know he's the Brazilian killer taking on. So it's, it'd be a fun little fight. I don't know. But uh, that will do it. Again, I was I was sending this off for the second time. Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for more Pride FC action. It's the last show of 2004. We send off 2004 with the Shockwave card, which what a card. Uh, it's kind of, it's an interesting card, because we got Mirko, Crow Cop, and Hideka Yoshida, which are, that might not seem like a main event fight, but I mean, you got a, a Olympic level judicate taking on a hell of a kickboxer in Mirko, Crow Cop, Matt Hughes, Carlos Newton, probably Matt Hughes is going to get that Avengers, you know, his loss, or at least, you know, not, not against Tsuji Kato, but at least, like, you know, having this fight against Carlos Newton. Igor, Ice Gold Igor, and, and Frank Shamrock, that's a fun fight, and Drumley Banner, Bob Sapp. Who doesn't love just two jack giant men beating the shit out of each other? How fun. So fun. As we will catch you guys next time. Take care, everyone.